Hi guys, today I'm here with a little bit of a different video for you. Today I thought I would show you my picture book collection. Um, I'm not sure how many of you will actually be interested in this video. I'm hoping a few of you will, but if you're not, I'm very sorry. I'll be back next week with hopefully something that you'll find a little more interesting. But I just wanted to do this because sometime last year, I, for some reason, I don't really remember why, but I decided uh, to pursue picture books more and see what was out there. Pick up some stories that I thought I would enjoy and start collecting some beautiful picture books that had beautiful stories and beautiful art to go with them. And I, like a lot of people, I'm sure, you know, always used to think, oh, picture books are just for children, you know, they're just simple stories and it's not really anything that an adult could find that interesting or intriguing, but I was very wrong. There are a lot of beautiful pictures, picture books out there, not, and I don't mean just the art. There are a lot of beautiful stories out there and profound stories as well that are contained within picture books. And so just because they're marketed to children and just because, you know, they're traditionally children's stories does not mean that adults cannot enjoy them, I don't think. Once I decided to change my view on picture books and give them a chance in my adult life, I started to look around and found quite a few that I really was interested in and then started picking them up and collecting them and everyone that I have bought so far I have been super pleased with and both the story and the art style. They're just beautiful objects to own of themselves because picture books are, you know, a large part of it is about the art and the drawings so there's a lot of work and consideration put into that so that means that there are a lot of, they're beautiful as objects just as themselves, but like I said, the stories are also, can be very profound and moving and very meaningful, even to older readers. So I am going to show you the ones that are currently in my collection. Um, these are just ones that I have picked up since I decided to start reading uh, and collecting picture books again as an adult. Of course, I have ones from my childhood that I've still kept for nostalgic purposes and things like that but I'm not going to show those to you today. Today I'm just going to show you the ones that I have started collecting since buying them again and reading these new stories as an adult. So the first ones that I have to show you here are all by the same author and that is William Joyce. The books that I have by him are The Fantastic Flying Books of Mr. Morris Lesmore and this is perhaps my favorite picture book of all time, excluding those from my childhood that I just love for nostalgic purposes, but of the ones that I have bought so far as an adult, this one is without a doubt my favorite. Any book lover needs to read this and needs to have it in their life. It's just an amazing story. You definitely need to pick it up. The art is incredible. I mean, the cover alone, look at that. It's beautiful, and as you can tell by this sticker right here, it was made into an Academy Award winning short, and which was also done by William Joyce. He has a company called Moonbot Studios. I believe. Yeah, Moonbot Studios. And he does picture books, obviously, and shorts, and just animated things, and he is just fantastic. I love William Joyce. I want to pick up and own every one of his picture books, everything that he ever does, I would like to own, and this is definitely my favorite. Like I said, if you're a book lover, which everyone here is, you definitely need to read this. It's an amazing story. And I'll show you a bit of the art on the inside. Oh, God. That's a little bit of the inside art. So just as beautiful as the front cover. And it's just a wonderful story. And I will read you the front. I'll probably read you the synopsis from the front cover for all of these because it's very short. And I mean, they always describe them better than I can. So this one says, Morris Lesmore loved words. He loved stories. He loved books. But every story has its upsets. Everything in Morris Lesmore's life, including his own story, is scattered to the winds. But the power of story will save the day. And then the next thing, the next two books that I have by William Joyce are part of the Guardians of Childhood series. And that this first one is The Man in the Moon. And then the second one is The Sandman. And you may recognize the Guardians of Childhood series because they turned uh, it into a movie a couple years ago, Rise of the Guardians. And this series um, starts out with these two picture books and then goes into chapter books, so I just think that's really cool that they mix those mediums like that. I've only read these two picture books, but I do want to pick up the, chap the chapter books at some point, and this is just 
all about the guardians of childhood, you know, like uh, Santa Claus, the Tooth Fairy, the Easter Bunny, the Sandman, the Man in the Moon, Jack Frost, things like that. So, yes, this is just, I just think it's a really cool, neat concept to have um, a children's series about those characters, and it's just really entertaining reads, and like I said, the artwork is beautiful, just as beautiful as Morris Lesmore. A little bit of the man in the moon, what this art is like. And the last thing I have by William Joyce is The Mischievians. And this is a really adorable little story. I'll read you the synopsis. Anybody seen my homework? What's that in my belly button? Where's my other sock? What's with that smell? I can't find the remote. It's not your fault. It's the Mischievians, an ancient race of global mischief makers who do all the things that embarrass you, all the things that bug you, all the things that you get blamed for. There is no cause for alarm, sorta. Come meet the homework eater, the fiend who steals your homework. See the end roller, the villain who uses up all the toilet paper. Discover the yawn mower, the creature who thinks you yawn, the creature who makes you yawn at the worst possible times, and many, many more. Read on and be free. So it's just a cute story about these little mischievians who are responsible for all the unfortunate things in children's lives, and it's just a really cute story, and it is beautifully illustrated, like every one of William Joyce's works. I hope to one day own everything by William Joyce because I absolutely love him but those are the ones I have right now and then the next two that I want to show you are both written by Neil Gaiman and illustrated by Charles Vess and of course I'm pretty sure everyone knows who, know knows who Neil Gaiman is and Charles Vess is the person who illustrated The Cats of Tanglewood Forest which I've talked about before on my channel. I read it a couple months ago and absolutely loved it and since reading that I have fallen in love with his art style so that's why I wanted to pick these up and also they were written by Neil Gaiman, so they're pretty much a dream team in my mind. And the first one is called Instructions, and the synopsis of this one goes like this. Trust dreams, trust your heart, and trust your story. A renowned storyteller whose words have transported readers to magical realms and an acclaimed illustrator of lushly imagined fairy tale landscapes guide a traveler safely through lands unknown and yet strangely familiar and home again. And so I actually haven't gotten to this one yet. I just received it in the mail from the book outlet the other day. And, but I am really looking forward to digging into this one because I think it, it sounds amazing and I know that I'm really going to enjoy it. Next one that I have that's a collaboration between Gaiman and Vess is something that I have already read and that I did uh, get from Book Outlet as well. And that is Blueberry Girl. And this is actually something that Neil Gaiman wrote for a friend of his who was pregnant with her daughter. And it's just kind of a prayer, a poem type deal for her. A uh, little girl and it's an adorable story. It would be a great gift for anyone in your life who's expecting a little girl or just if you're like me and you enjoy cute little stories like this. It reads kind of like a poem slash a lullaby type thing and it's really adorable and I'll show you the inside art is just as beautiful as the other one that I showed you. And yeah, I would really recommend this one. Next couple of books that I have are both by um, Kate Bernheimer. And the first one of those is The Girl in the Castle Inside the Museum. And this is uh, illustrated by Nicoletta Seckley. I think that's how you say it. I'm not sure. I'm probably, I'm probably wrong. But uh, I absolutely love her art style. I think it's absolutely gorgeous, as you can tell by the cover here. And I'll show you some of the inside art as well. It's just so beautiful. It's just dreamy and ethereal and I love it. And I'll read you the synopsis of this one as well. And it says, Once there was a small castle on display in a museum. When children visited, they'd press close to the glass globe in which the castle sat. For they'd heard that if they looked hard enough, they'd see a tiny girl inside. Can you see her? Here is an original fairy tale that feels like a dream. Haunting, beautiful, and completely unforgettable. And I would definitely agree with that assessment of this book. When I read it, I absolutely loved it. And I would really recommend this one. This thing that I have by Kate Bernheimer is called The Lonely Book. And this is actually illustrated by Chris Chabon. The illustrations in this one are adorable as well. There's a little bit of the art on the inside. And I'll read you the synopsis. Once there was a brand new book that arrived at the library. The book loved to be read and children like you would often check it out. But in time, the book became old and worn. It was no longer pulled excitedly off the shelf. Until one day, a little girl found the lonely book, opened its shabby cover, and began to read. This is an adorable book. I would definitely recommend it, uh, just like Morris Lessmore. For anyone who is a book lover, it'll definitely warm your heart, and it's a very cute and enchanting story. 
next thing I have is by one of my favorite artists ever, and that is Dream Animals, A Bedtime Journey by Emily Winfield Martin. She actually has an Etsy shop where she does a lot of prints, and some of them actually come from this book. I'll try to remember to, to link her shop down below. All of her art is beautiful. She wrote and illustrated this story, obviously, and it is absolutely beautiful and gorgeous, and I love it. Here's some of the art on the inside here. And the synopsis says, furred, finned, or feathered, your dream animal is waiting. Snuggle up, open this book, and get ready to go to your dreams. This is an absolutely adorable story, and the art is also breathtaking, as you can tell. And there's actually a sequel slash companion to this called Daydreamers that I'm hoping to get my hands on very soon. This book I think I've showed in one of my wrap-ups before I read it a couple of months ago. And th that is Julia's House for Lost Creatures by Ben Hatke, who you may know as the author of Zeta the Space Girl series. And this is an adorable book. Absolutely love it. Like I said, I read it a couple months ago and really enjoyed it. The uh, art style for this is wonderful as well. I think Ben Hatke wrote and illustrated this. Yes. The art is kind of like a watercolor type style, I think, as you can tell. There's some of the inside art. It's absolutely beautiful. And the synopsis for this says, Julia's house came to town and settled by the sea. Things are just a little too quiet for Julia, so she opens her doors to any lost creatures in search of a home. Soon she's hosting trolls, goblins, mermaids, ghosts, and even dragons. Quiet isn't exactly a problem anymore. Okay, just two more. Next one I have here is Just Being Audrey, which I actually just got from the book outlet as well. And I've read this one and really enjoyed it. This is just a little... Um, biography of Audrey Hepburn, obviously in picture book form, and this is written by Margaret Cardillo and illustrated by Julia Denos, Denos? I'm sure I butchered both of those names, I'm very sorry, but I really enjoyed the art in this, the, um, which you can tell from the front cover, and then show you some inside art as well. Let me find my favorite illustration. This is some of the inside art as well, so that's very pretty and I really enjoyed this. Um, the writing isn't anything too special but I would definitely recommend this though if you like Audrey Hepburn or if you have a small child in your life that you want to introduce Audrey Hepburn to. This is definitely a good option for that. The very last book I have here is by another author that I really enjoy their work and it's written and illustrated by the same person and that is Oliver Jeffers. So this is Once Upon an Alphabet short stories for all the letters and I think that's pretty self-explanatory. He just takes all the letters of the alphabet and writes little short stories for them and has uh, illustrations to go along with them and this is a beautiful book and I really like I said I really enjoy Oliver Jeffers art style and this is a little bit of what it looks like on the inside. All right everyone those are the books that I have thus far in my picture book collection. I hope you enjoyed this video. I know picture books and collecting them isn't for everyone but I hope some of you enjoyed this video and I really think that picture books can be for more than just children. They can definitely be enjoyed by adults as well and I know that picture books also seem like a big big expense. Such a short book to um they can be kind of expensive sometimes but like I said I got a lot of these on book outlet so if you just look out for deals on websites like that you might be able to get them a little bit cheaper yeah so I really hope you enjoyed this video and I will see you in my next one thanks for watching